My name is TJ Tsai. I'm from the Audio and Multimedia Group at the International Computer Science Institute. I'd like to tell you today about just a small little piece of what we do. This is joint work together with Gerald Friedland. We all know that search engines have completely transformed our society. At a high level, what they do conceptually is very simple. They help us to make sense out of tons of text data. You give it a few search keywords, and it will search through tons of web pages and text files and return to you the most relevant items. But the problem is that nowadays, a lot of the data out there is not text data. It's multimedia data, videos and audio. We live in an age of YouTube, Flickr, iTunes, podcasts. But unfortunately, we don't have that many sophisticated tools to help us to make sense out of this huge mass of multimedia data. We still rely heavily on text matching on the names of video and audio files. So there's a need to develop tools to help us to make sense out of this huge volume of multimedia data. Now, the piece of this big picture that I'm interested in personally is the audio part, developing efficient, useful tools for audio search. And in this talk today, this very brief talk, I'd like to focus on that word efficient, doing what we can already do, but doing it more efficiently. Now, what we can already do is copy detection. Many of you are familiar with the applications Shazam and SoundHound. If you hear a piece of music in the car or in a restaurant and you really like the, you really like the song, but you don't know what the, name of, what the name of the song is, you can record a short five to 10 second sample on your cell phone, and within seconds it will identify the name of the song. This can already be done. The question that we wanted to ask was, can we do this more efficiently? Now, rather than jumping into the gory technical details of our approach, I'd like to instead give you an analogy that communicates the idea that we wanted to explore. The analogy is this. Imagine for a moment that you are sitting at the front desk of a very large corporation. Your job, and, and in this front desk, there's a lot of packages that pass through this front desk. Your job is to identify any packages that contain a specific set of spare parts. If you find a box that contains this exact same set of spare parts, your job is to intercept that package. Now, one way that you could do this is to open up every single box, look inside, and see if it matches what you're looking for. But that's very inefficient. Probably, probably if you and I were to do this, we would come up to a box and say, well, that box is too small, or that box is too big, that box is too heavy or too light, that one's not the right proportions. There's actually quite a bit that we could say about the contents of the box without actually having to open the box. And this is a very rough analogy of the idea that we wanted to explore. The existing audio copy detection literature generally assumes that the starting point is audio data in its full decompressed representation. Now, this is a very reasonable assumption since audio in its original physical interpretation is in this format. However, the practical reality is that nowadays, when audio is exchanged online, it's almost never exchanged in its full decompressed representation. It's almost always exchanged in a compressed format like MP3. So in order to apply this existing technology in an online application, one would have to take your MP3 file, decompress it to its full, de full representation, and then extract fingerprints and see if it matches something in your database. The question we wanted to ask was, can we extract these fingerprints directly in the compressed domain, and does that give us enough information to reliably detect duplicates? And the answer to this question is yes, at a certain performance cost. Now, we do expect to take a hit in performance since, after all, if we did open up every single box, we would make a more reliable decision. It would just be much, much more inefficient. So we do expect to take a hit in performance. And based on experimental simulations, we estimate that this hit in performance is about a 10 dB loss in signal-to-noise ratio. So if you compare these two performance curves, you'll see that they're roughly the same shape, but offset by about 5 to 10 dB. So the good news is this. For many applications, those that operate in the medium to high signal-to-noise ratio regimes, decompressing to the full representation is not necessary. We can extract fingerprints directly in the compressed domain, and that gives us enough information to reliably detect duplicates. This is the website for our multimedia research group. Please check it out. Also, if you'd like to visit ICSI this afternoon to meet us in person, um, there will be shuttles going to and from ICSI, leaving from the east side of Soda Hall starting just after lunch. Thank you very much.